In the previous lesson, I showed you how we can think about compound interest in terms of using the simple interest formula to calculate interest each year. But I want to go into more detail with compound interest in this lesson because it's pretty tedious to set up a table and draw out the interest calculation for every single year of an investment. I'm going to show you a simpler way to do it. So unlike simple interest, compound interest is when interest is calculated on everything in the account, not just the principal. And there's kind of two ways we can think about compound interest. The first way is to calculate the amount you will have in the future. And the second way is to calculate the principal needed in order to get a certain future value. So if you want to figure out, I'm investing $1,000 today, how much money is it going to be worth five years from now, you would use this formula, where A is the amount or future value, what it's going to be worth, P is the principal or present value, what it's worth right now, I is the interest rate per compounding period. I'll get to that in a minute. And N is the number of compounding periods. I'll also talk about that in a minute. So use this formula to calculate A, the amount it's going to be, the future value. If, say, you have this problem, I know that five years from now I want to have $5,000. How much do I need to put into my account today? Then you would use this formula to calculate P, or the present value, the value it's worth right now. I want you to notice this. In both formulas, we have an exponent. Now, certain calculators have their own buttons to press to get an exponent. Sometimes the button on your calculator will look like this. Sometimes it will look like this you need to look at your calculator and find the exponent button. The other thing to recognize is that in the formula to calculate the present value or the principal, this is a negative exponent. So you need to find your negative button on your calculator. So once we go through some examples in this lesson, hopefully you can follow along and make sure that you know how to input the numbers correctly into your calculator. If you get into trouble with that or you're not sure how to do it properly, just let me know and I can help you with that. Now I want to talk about this compounding period. I've said it a couple times. The compounding period refers to how many times each year the interest is calculated. So you can calculate the interest annually, semi-annually, monthly, weekly, daily. It depends on what investment you're talking about or what loan you're talking about. So I want to spend a little bit of time talking about this value I right here. So I is the interest rate per compounding period. Now, interest rates themselves are always given per annum or per year. So, for example, if I have a 3% interest rate on my savings account, that means I'm getting interest at 3% per year. But the interest could be calculated more than once per year. Okay, so I've got a bunch of different words here, compounded annually semi-annually, monthly, weekly, daily, those all mean different things. They refer to the number of times each year the interest is being calculated. Annually is once per year. So my interest rate would stay the same. If it's 3% per year, once per year, well, it's still just 3%, 0.03. If my interest is compounded semi-annually, though, semi-annually means two times per year. 
you're basically cutting the year into two pieces. You're cutting it in half. So if you're cutting the year in half, semi-annually, that means you're cutting the interest rate in half for each half of the year. So I, in my compound interest formula, would be 0 0.03 divided by 2. If I'm compounding the interest monthly, that means each month, 12 times per year. So I have to divide my interest rate by 12. Compounded weekly, well, there's 52 weeks in a year, so I have to divide my interest rate by 52. If my interest is compounded every day, well, I need to divide by 365 because that's how many times each year the interest is being calculated. So I, again, is the interest rate per compounding period. So if you're compounding once per year, it's just the annual interest rate. Twice per year, divide it by 2. Monthly, divide by 12. Weekly, divide by 52. Daily, divide by 365. If you don't do this, then you're going to get the wrong answer for your future value and your present value. So I is the interest rate, not per year, but per compounding period. N is not the number of years. N is the number of compounding periods. So similar to up here, we had to make an adjustment for the interest rate, depending on how many times the interest was being calculated each year. We have to do the same thing here. So for example, if you invest your money for five years, and the interest is compounded annually, once per year, how many times is it being compounded? Well, once per year for five years, that's five times. So n is five. But if the interest is compounded semi-annually, so twice per year for five years, well, that's 10 times the interest has been calculated overall. So we took the number of years and multiplied by the number of compounding periods per year. For monthly compounding, well, the interest is being compounded 12 times per year for 5 years. So 5 times 12, that's 60 times. So n is 60. Weekly, we take the number of years and multiply by 52. Daily, multiply the number of years by 365. So you have to make adjustments for I and N depending on how often the interest is being compounded. And hopefully this will make a little more sense once we do some examples. Mr. Fisher wanted to save some money, so he invested $6,000 into a three-month guaranteed investment, GIC, at 2.5% interest compounded monthly. How much money will he have when the investment matures after three months? So the first thing we need to ask ourselves is, which formula do we use? I mentioned this first one was for calculating the amount it's going to be, or the future value, and this one is used for calculating the present value, or the principal that you need to have in order to have a certain future value. So what are we looking for in this case? How much money will he have? That's talking about the future value. We want to calculate A. So that's the equation we're going to use. So to calculate A, I need to plug in values for P, I, and N. P is the principal, or the present value. The value that the investment is worth at the beginning. That's $6,000. I is the interest rate per compounding period. Well, it's 2.5%, and that's always given as a yearly percentage. So that's per year, but it's compounded monthly. So we need to take this percent and divide it by 12. N is not the number of years. It's the number of compounding periods. Well, it's compounded monthly. So we need to know the number of months. Well, it's three months, so n is three. I just want to show you two different calculators and how you would input this into them. So in this style of calculator, 
has a two line display, so I can just type the formula exactly as I've written it on paper. Divide the interest rate by the number of compounding periods per year, and that's my exponent button right there. Looks like a upward pointing arrow. Here's a different style of calculator. This is just the one I had on my computer. Here you need to make sure you press the multiplication symbol before you do your brackets. Then you just type things in the same way. And this time, the exponent button looks like x with an exponent of y. So you have to look at your calculator and see what your exponent button looks like. So when you type this in your calculator, you get $6,037.58. How much interest will he have earned? Okay, so we need to think about this. He put $6,000 into the GIC. At the end of the three months, he had $6,037.58. So how much money did he earn? That's the interest. Well, the interest is just the difference between the amount that he ended up with and the principal, or the original starting value. So if we just take A and subtract P, we end up with the amount of interest, which is $37.58. So he earned $37.58 in interest. Here's another example. How much money should you invest today at 8% compounded annually in order to have $2,000 in five years? So it's saying, how much money should you invest today? That is not the future value. That's the present value. Today, that's the key word. So we're trying to figure out how much the value is today. That's P. So we're trying to find the present value or the principle that we should invest so that the future value is $2,000. We're going to use this formula. So the principle is what we're trying to find. A is the future value, that's $2,000. That's what it's going to be worth. The interest rate is 8%, but it's compounded annually, so it stays the same, it's 0 0.08. Five years, so it's five years compounded once per year, so that's five times. Just don't forget that the exponent is negative here. So when you type this into your calculator, you should end up with this answer. Make sure that you can do it. If you're not getting this answer, then you need to ask for help, and I can point you in the right direction. One clue that you should look for to make sure that you're on the right track is if you're finding the value of P, the principal, well, the original amount of money should be less than the future value because the value of money grows over time. So if you did this calculation and you ended up with a value larger than $2,000, you know you're doing it wrong. The other way, if you're trying to figure out what the future value is, it should be a bigger value than your principal. So those are some things to look for. So when you're given an interest question, look for the words compound or compounding or compounded. If you see those words at all in the question, you know you're going to be using one of these two formulas. If it doesn't say compounded, but it says simple interest, then you're going to be using the simple interest calculation. But if it's compound interest, you have to think, am I looking for the future value or am I looking for the present value? And that tells you which formula to use. Be careful with your values for I and N. If it's compounded more than once per year, you have to divide the interest rate by the correct number and multiply the number of years by the correct number to get values of I and N. So try the practice problems, see how they go, reach out for help if you need it.